Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Yandere Simulator Myths, a series where you guys ask me questions, give me challenges, or tell me myths that you have about the game, and I try to answer them in this video. We got a lot of great ones to go through today, so let's get it started. This first question is something that I've wanted to answer for a very long time since I've literally gotten hundreds and hundreds of comments of this same question. It is, does Snap work yet? No! Next question of the day is, what if you change Yandere Chan clothes on Slender Mode? Well, let's go into Slender Mode and figure it out. Okay, let's go run over to the locker room. Watch your head, girl! You a tall ass bitch! Oh, she can go through it! <laughs> she can just go through it, doesn't even matter. Okay, let's open this. And let's go nude. I want to see a nude Slender Girl. Damn, oh, son! Oh, shit! Nude Slender Girl! <laughs> can she bathe on Slender Mode? Let's see. Hey, watch that body, long legs. Damn, this slender woman is twerking while she's taking a bath. She's not even touching the seat. Let's try using different uniforms. Let's see what they look like on her in slender mode. Let's try gym uniform. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, it's not bad. Uh, we'll try school swimsuit. Hopefully they have like a size quadruple XL for this swimsuit. Okay, not bad. It still looks like the same size as when she's smaller, but she just has some ridiculously long legs. Go back to our school uniform. I want to see what the gloves look like on her, actually. So let's go back nude. There we go. Nude is the best. Aw, oh, man, I can't even put on the gloves. But why do her forearms look like she got those Popeye the Sailor forearms? Those are some extra swole forearms. Do you even lift, girl? Okay, so to answer the question, what if you change on Dairy Chan clothes on Slender Mode? She wears the exact same clothes. Nothing changes. What the hell is wrong with you? Get away from me! What guy in his right mind would want a tall, naked girl to get away from him? And it's like zooming in on my JJ. Okay, that's really cool. Sponsored by no, Brazzers, everybody. Really like. On to the next question. Next myth of the day is... Go into Cerno mode and then go put on the gloves. The gloves will break the Ice Fairy's clothes. Okay, we are already inside the Drama Club and we are also in Cerno mode, so let's put on these gloves. And she looks like she's wearing leggings now under her skirt and some long-ass gloves. That's actually pretty cool. Looks kind of stylish on her, it's fitting. She looks like she's ready to go to the gym and lift some hardcore weights, doesn't she? That's pretty cool. Let's see what all the other Easter eggs look like with the gloves on. So let's try, you know, just any different one. Okay, first let's try punished mode. Okay, she actually already has some gloves on, but let's put gloves on top of gloves, kind of like a gloveception. So here we go. And it looks kind of different. She looks like she's wearing body armor now. Let's try gallo mode. Put that on. And yeah, okay, so basically it's kind of like the same thing. They have that same yellow underneath their shirt and this red like mini cape looking thing. But I like Gallo mode. I like the way she looks. It's really awesome. I wish you could do this. Oh, I did not know you could do this. I recently just found this out. And close your legs, girl. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, last one we are going to try is 47 mode. She actually already has gloves on, but we're going to go from black to white gloves. And that's all it does. It just goes from black to white gloves. So yeah, if you use the gloves while you have certain Easter eggs activated, it may change their clothes. It may put on different clothing on them. It might change the gloves from black to white. But as for the myth that the gloves will break the Ice Fairy's clothing, that is not true. She just wore like extra leggings and she had some gloves on that look like long sleeve gloves. On to the next question. Next myth of the day is, if you kill Senpai with Ice Fairy mode, what name will police say? That's actually interesting because we don't really know what Senpai's name is. Uh, we just call him Senpai. I believe his name is on Facebook, but I'm not really sure, you know, because I don't remember what his name is. So we're killing Midori because we want someone to, you know, call the police and count down that timer from five minutes on. So what we're going to do... Actually, wait, I need to go clean up all this blood, all this mess. Okay, let's go downstairs real quick. Let's dump this bloody weapon. Now we just gotta change our bloody clothes. Last order of business, dump this, and then we just activate it so there's no obby dance about us killing anybody. And now we just play the waiting game for Oka or the Basu sisters or anyone to notice that Midori is dead on the roof so the countdown can begin and we can kill Senpai in Cerno mode. Oh, there we go. There's one sister. Yeah, look at that dead body. Call the police. Run like a little pussy. There we go, the countdown has begun. The police are on their way. All we need to do now is we just need to kill Senpai right here. Surprise, oh, motherfucker! Yeah. yeah, look at that. I got an audience. I feel like a rock star right now. Get out of here, everybody. Go home. Show's over. Now we just got to fast forward time and wait for the police to arrive. The police arrive at school. The, 
Please discover the corpses of Midori Gurren and Senpai. Oh my god, they call him Senpai? Are you fucking joking me? They call that dude Senpai. He is so awesome that he doesn't even have a name. His name is Senpai, according to the police. So when they file their official police report, they're gonna put first and last name, and it's just gonna say Senpai. And they're gonna be like, what's his last name? And they're like, fuck it. His name's gonna be Senpai Senpai, first and last name. So there you go. The name that the police say is Senpai. The police are unable to locate any murder weapons. The police question Yandere chan but cannot link her to any crimes. The police do not have enough evidence to perform an arrest. The police investigation ends and students are free to leave. Yandere chan stalks Senpai until he's returned home safely. <laughs> and then it returns to her own home. So is she like in the ambulance as he's being transported to the hospital, you know, on his way to the morgue too? Is she just like looking at him intently with her crazy ass eyes until she has to go home? Because that's what I can imagine. He's dead. He's dead of the dead. And she's just stalking him. If that's not love, I don't know what is. Anyway, we answer the question. Senpai's name comes up to the police as Senpai. On to the next myth. Okay, I think I got one. Get a mind slave. Wait for Kukona to have her phone call. When she gets her phone call, give a weapon to the mind slave. Will it be possible for the mind slave to kill Kukona while she's talking on the phone? Okay, in order for us to do that, we need to change the day from Thursday to Monday. So there we go. And then we need to get a mind slave. So boom, boom, boom. There you go as well. Let's fast forward time. Make sure Saki comes as the mind slave to school. There you are. And now we just need to fast forward time and wait for Kakona to make her phone call about compensated dating. Look at Kakona running here in dramatic fashion. She probably answers the phone in dramatic fashion too. Hello. It's me. Anyway, let's check this out in cinematic view. So here we go. And bam! Fatality. She was talking on the phone and that was her last thing she ever said. Look at Kakona still sliding even though she's dead. What are you doing, Kakona? Stop moving! You're supposed to be dead! So there you have it. It is possible for the mind slave to kill Kakona while she's talking on the phone. She just slices her up mid-sentence as she's like talking about the compensated dating. The guy on the other line is probably like, what the fuck just happened? But you know what? I want to see if the mind slave, I'm pretty sure she will, but I want to see the mind slave killing Kakona while she's on the shitter. I want to see her kill her while she's in the bathroom. Actually, I just thought of one that's even better. How about the mind slave trying to kill Kakona as she's turning on the light and getting electrocuted? Do both of them get electrocuted? Because I know, like, if you touch someone who's being electrocuted, then you'll get electrocuted too. Especially since Saki's gonna be holding a knife. So let's fast forward time and wait for Kakona to go to the bathroom. Okay, there Kakona goes. I need to make sure that I do this just right. So let's unscrew this real quick. And then I'm gonna give Saki the screwdriver. Okay, give her the weapon. Oh man, I hope I wasn't too late. Come on, Saki! Oh, you slow ass Saki. Kakona's already about to take her shit and you're just right there. No, 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 no. Saki, don't do this to me, girl. Oh God. Okay, fill this up. Is Saki coming anytime soon? Damn it! Oh, I might have to redo this. All right, let's pour this on her. There you go. And let's turn off the lights. Someone really just throw water on me? Yeah. Why would someone do this? Shut up, Kokona. Go turn on those lights. I have to turn the stupid lights back on. Damn it, Saki's not even here yet. Where is it? It's right there. Oh, there's Saki. Come on, Saki, hurry. Hurry, Saki. No. Saki, get in here. Stab her. Stab her, stab her, stab her. Oh my god. We were just like a split second late. She was turning the corner about to stab Kukona. And now Saki is spinning around like an idiot. But what else is new? And now she's on her knees. And she died. Okay, we're gonna try that one more time because I want it to be just right. I actually think we gave Saki the screwdriver too soon. She might stab her as she's getting this water poured on her. I'm not gonna lie. Oh crap, I didn't even fill this up yet. Damn, I'm the one slipping. Okay, there we go. Pour that on her. Well, bam! And now we just gotta turn really off the lights. Just throw water on me? Come on, Saki! Come on, Saki! Saki, this? please! Saki, where are you at? Oh, hurry, girl! Turn the stupid Shit, lights please! Come on, on, this is nerve-wracking. No, do it, girl! Come on! It? Fuck! Ah, uh, we uh, gave it too late. Uh, Fuck me! All right, we gotta try this one more time. Oh, stab her! Stab her! Oh! <laughs> Kakona died from getting electrocuted and then she got stabbed. 
She died twice. She got that double death. But that's not what we wanted to do. I wanted Kakona to be electrocuted as she's getting stabbed. We're going to try it one more time. I think I found the perfect timing for everything. So let's try it one last time. There we go. There we go. Cinematic mode. And boom. There you go. What? That's all that happened? The electrocution sound effect is still there, but she still kills her. And she's not electrocuted anymore. So there you have it. That's all that happens. She kills Kakona as she's getting electrocuted. And then Saki kills herself. So nothing changes. All right. That took me an unnecessarily long time to do to get Saki stabbing Kakona as she's getting electrocuted. But it was all for nothing. Kakona still gets killed. It's like she didn't even get electrocuted even though the sound effects were there. On to the next question. Jay, if you frame Kakona, get sane, but don't clean your bloody clothes. Yandere chan will convince the police that she was a witness who got splashed with blood. You guys smell that? It smells like bullshit. But you know what? I'm gonna try it because you never know. So let's open this door. Come on, open up. Damn, sometimes it's so glitchy, there's not even an open option. We are gonna get our trusty little gloves. And then we're gonna wait for Kakona to make her gross octopus hot doggies. And then get her knife. There she goes. She's making her hot dogs. <laughs> and there I go. Where am I? I'm taking pictures. Man, I have the most flexible spine in existence. Look at this shit. <laughs> Come on, Kakona, make those hot dogs, girl. I'm taking pictures up your skirt, Kakona. What are you gonna do about it? Okay, now we grab her knife, and let's make this easy for ourselves one more time. We are gonna get Oka in the occult club. I mean, come on. We just have to. We just have to! Okay, so now we don't clean up our bloody clothes. Our clothes are actually not even that bloody. Just the gloves. That's a first. Oh, our hair's a little bit bloody. How the hell did that happen? Okay, so what we need to do, we need to drop the knife, right? Let's make sure I got the question right. Don't clean your bloody clothes. Yandere Chan will convince the police she was a witness who got splashed with blood. Okay, so now all we need to do is just fast forward time and then go home. And Derichan stands near the school gate and waits for Senpai to leave school. While walking around the school, the teacher discovers a corpse. The teacher immediately calls the police. The teacher informs the rest of the faculty about her discovery. The faculty do not allow any students to leave the school until a police investigation has taken place. The police arrive at school. The police discover the corpse of Okaruto. The police discover a knife that is stained with the blood of Okaruto. The police find the fingerprints of Kakona Haruka on the weapon. Kakona Haruka is arrested by the police. The police notice that Yandere Chan's clothing is bloody. They confirm that the blood is not hers. Yandere Chan is able to convince the police that she was splashed with blood while witnessing a murder. Whoa! This guy was right and I was wrong. I guess what I was smelling wasn't bullshit. I guess I was smelling my own shit. Bravo! I have to say, I was wrong. She does convince the police that she was a witness splashed with blood. I mean, these must be the dumbest cops in the history of being a cop. But anyway, that one is true. She is a witness to the crime if she's splashed with the blood or she has bloody clothing. On to the last myth of the day. Try this. Get Kakona's knife. Kill a random student with a different weapon. Not Kakona's knife. Burn the body slash weapon, but leave the blood and then drop Kakona's knife onto the crime scene. Make sure you clean yourself up and become sane. Wait for police to arrive. Does Kakona get arrested even if her knife wasn't the knife used to kill the student? Okay, here is Kakona's knife, but we are not going to use it. It is going to stay in slot 2. Let's use a katana, just cuz, man. I want to use a katana to slice a bitch up. Hi! Die! There we go. And let's drag this body. And teleport to the bottom. There we go. Oh, 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 hey, stop spazzing out. Oh my god, all the students. Oh shit. <laughs> they don't even notice, man. These guys have no peripheral vision. Dump her body in there. And make sure none of our footprints are over here. So we're just gonna sweep up all of that blood. Why am I saying sweep? I mean mop up the blood. Durr. Okay, I think there are no more Ayanachan footprints. Let's drop that. And let's go back onto the roof. And drop this knife onto the blood. Wait, wait, wait. I want to drop it right on the blood. Okay, drop this on the blood. Perfect. And we got to clean up our footprints up here too. Let's carry that. And sweep that blood up. Come on. Oh my god. I hate when that happens. Stop doing that. I'm tired of these bloody footprints on the floor. Stop it. I don't want any more new ones. There we go. Okay, listen to me. It didn't make any more new footprints. Last one. Bam! Okay, now we just need to get our katana and throw it into the furnace. Dump this in there. 
Not gonna activate it yet because I still need to change my clothes and become sane. Can I laugh as I'm taking a shower? Let me try. Let me try. Ah, oh, you can't. You gotta shower and then you can laugh. Whatever, she's laughing because she had the best shower of her life. Yeah, laugh it off, girl. Okay, now she's done. No more laughing time. It's no more fun and games. We're here to get serious. Dump that in there. And get the uniform. And dump it in there too. Make sure I don't step on all that blood. And activate it. There we go. I might just have the blood on the roof. So, you know, it's right next to the murder weapon. So let me sweep all this up real quick. All right, done. Okay, I think we followed all the steps. We burned all the stuff we needed to burn. And then the knife is just right there. Is it covered in any blood? No, it's not. Okay, whatever. Anyway, we are going to go see what happens with the police and see if Kakona got framed for murder, even though that weapon wasn't the one used to kill the student. The police arrive at school. The police are unable to locate any corpses on the school grounds. The police are unable to locate any murder weapons. The police question Yonari Chan but cannot link her to any crimes. The police do not have enough evidence to perform an arrest. The police investigation ends and students are free to leave. Yonari Chan stalks Senpai until he's returned home safely and then returns to her own home. Okay, so there you have it. If you kill a student with a different weapon, but drop Kokona's fingerprinted knife onto that pool of blood, nothing happens. Nobody gets arrested. They can't find a body. The police said, fuck this investigation. If we can't find a body, even though there's a knife and a pool of obvious human blood on the floor, we're just going to call this investigation off. Smartest cops ever. But that is going to do it for Yandere Simulator Myths. If you guys have any more questions, challenges, or myths that you want to be featured in the next video, write them in the comment section below. I will choose the best and most creative ones to do in the next episode. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!